Hi, I'm Rudy Winston with Canon USA. We're going to talk here about exposure control in the EO 7D Mark II and some of the new features that you have that can give you even more control over the look of your images. Any discussion of exposure control in this camera has to start with its metering system. It's a brand new 150,000 pixel RGB plus IR type metering system. You can think of the metering sensor in this camera as almost being like a small imaging sensor. It not only reads brightness, but it reads color information, where a subject is, it can even detect faces. So in and of itself, the metering sensor alone is a very interesting advance over where we've been with previous mid-range EOS cameras. Now in terms of controlling, there's a great new feature on the right side of the viewfinder in the EOS 7D Mark II, and that's a separate analog scale, again running up and down the right hand side of the viewfinder, that gives you indications of exposure compensation when you're in automatic, it gives you your manual exposure metering, and flash exposure compensation as well. Uh, that vertical scale really adds a dimension to the control that you have over exposure in the camera, particularly if you're shooting flash, but even for users who work in manual mode or whatever, you're going to see that you have a great deal more information at your fingertips than you would have previously. ISO range on the camera is 100 through 16,000 ISO, and you can expand that to 25,600 and 51,200. More noteworthy, though, is the auto ISO. This is the most comprehensive auto ISO we've ever had in an EOS camera. And for users who want to experiment with this feature, it gives you a lot more control over how the auto ISO is going to work than we've been able to do previously. First off, you define with auto ISO the lowest and the highest ISO you feel comfortable working with. That can be anywhere between that 100 to 16,000 ISO. What's also interesting is you can set a user-defined minimum shutter speed if you're working in the program or the aperture priority mode. Now that range can be anywhere from 1 8,000th of a second down to 1 full second. So as the light levels drop, the camera, once it reaches your predefined lowest speed, it'll automatically start raising the ISO to keep shutter speeds at or above that level. Now another option you have is the so-called auto option for minimum shutter speed. Up to now, in a Canon camera, that's meant one over the focal length of the lens. And sometimes that just didn't give you enough control. If you were working, for instance, with a wide angle zoom, like a 16 to 35 millimeter lens, for instance, that would mean that in some situations, you'd have a minimum shutter speed that would drop as low as a 15th of a second sometimes, and that may not have been what you needed to give you sharp enough pictures if the subjects were moving even a little bit. Now, with the 7D Mark II, if you set auto as your minimum shutter speed, you further have a scale in the menu that you can adjust that plus or minus three full stops of shutter speeds. You can go up to three stops faster than one over the focal length of the lens, or if you're in a controlled situation, you want to work lower speeds and so on, you can go up to three stops slower. So auto ISO really has been enhanced in this camera. A lot of photographers, even experienced SLR shooters, are turning to auto ISO in situations where lighting is changing rapidly. That can be in situations where you might be rushing from indoors to outdoors. Think of a wedding photographer doing a ceremony and then running, kind of following the bride and groom outside the church into broad daylight. Auto ISO can take care of that kind of situation for you and handle it. This camera gives you even more range to be able to accommodate that. And even in situations where you want to take two or more pictures of a particular scene or subject and make major changes to camera settings, either shutter speeds or apertures. Maybe you want to shoot a scenic picture or something with the lens stopped all the way down to f22 and then shoot the same scene with the aperture wide open. All you have to do in this case would be just turn the dial and adjust it and auto ISO will accommodate that without you having to stop and make ISO adjustments too. Now another cool new feature that kind of falls under the umbrella of exposure control is the camera's flicker detection for still images. What we have here for the first time in an EOS camera is a camera that can read and detect when artificial lights, fluorescent lights, certain other types of artificial lights that may be in an office building, a gym, an arena, uh, or whatever, when these lights are cycling on and off consistently at a certain rate. They're often too fast for our eyes to detect, but up until now, 
The problem has been a photographer could go in shooting sports or candids or whatever this might be and run into situations where they'd be getting great variations from one shot to the next in terms of exposure and white balance. And this is because of the timing of when their shutter is firing versus these lights cycling on and off, on and off, on and off many, many times per second. This flicker detection is user activated in the EOS 7D Mark II and it's off by default so you do have to turn it on. The camera does give you an icon in the viewfinder which is active by default and that icon will flash on and off to tell you hey you should turn your flicker detection on and if your flicker detection is turned on if the camera detects that lights are flickering on and off that indication will appear steadily. Now this flicker detection has a couple of limits. One is that it will only work with lights that are flickering at a rate of 100 hertz or 100 cycles per second or 120 hertz. It can't adjust for flickering at other rates. And certainly if you're working in a critical situation where you're really concerned about final results, we always recommend running some tests with and without it and check at the very minimum on the LCD monitor on the back of the camera to see whether the flicker detection is giving you the correction that you want. But the bottom line is the flicker detection is a tremendous new technology for location shooters. And it answers a question that previously in SLR cameras we really had no answer for other than to tell photographers, hey, shoot raw images and be prepared to do a lot of adjusting on a shot by shot basis in post production or work at slow shutter speeds like a 30th of a second, maybe a 60th of a second to accommodate the entire cycle of a light going on, off, on and so on. That certainly wouldn't have worked for sports photographers for instance. So give flicker detection a try if you work on location uh, shooting in artificially lit environments. Another great feature for exposure control is the way the camera implements AE lock. Now in this camera there are two different ways that AE lock is performed. There's traditional Canon AE lock and the way that's done is push a button and it locks exposure and you'll see a little asterisk looking icon that appears in the viewfinder and the AE lock will remain active as long as the meter in the camera remains active. So in other words if you press that AE lock button, don't touch anything else within six seconds the meter timer goes off, the viewfinder goes blank and with it goes your locked in meter reading. You'd have to lock it again to reperform it. Canon offers now a second option in your custom controls and that's AE lock withhold. Now any of five different controls on the camera plus the AF stop buttons that are on certain high-end super telephoto lenses can be set to activate either version of AE lock. The AE lock withhold in particular is a great option, particularly if you like to work with partial or spot metering. Now AE lock withhold differs from Canon's traditional AE lock because once you press the button that activates it, it'll stay active as long as the auto power off timer remains active. So in other words, you can hold a reading for a lot longer and control it in the setup menu in terms of how long it'll ultimately hold if you don't touch any other buttons. And Another cool thing with AE lock withhold is that if you take a locked in reading and then you're done with it, you want to cancel the AE lock, all you have to do is press the button a second time. Now another great feature with either flavor of AE lock is that with the new analog metering scale in the viewfinder, once you press the AE lock button and you lock in a reading, you can now move the camera around and the vertical analog scale on the right hand side of the viewfinder will show you the difference in brightness from what you locked compared to what you're looking at now. With spot or partial metering that can be a terrific means for a portrait photographer for instance to take a reading off a highlight side of a face and then you can read the shadow side of the face, you can read background information and so on and see how different parts of the scene vary in terms of brightness compared to what you originally metered off of and locked the reading in. Another tremendous new feature is the register recall shooting function which you can call up with any of the back buttons on the camera and this is going to allow you at the press of a button to instantly change the camera to totally different settings not only for exposure but for things like white balance and even autofocus as well. Classic example where this could be useful and this is something that people that do wildlife and sports and so on are no doubt familiar with 
you have a subject that is starting in sunlight. You begin to focus on that subject as it moves towards the camera, and it moves from sun into shade. Even auto exposure sometimes is not enough to accommodate the sudden change in where that subject is. With this new register recall shooting function, you can preset exposure level, white balance, ISO, shutter speed aperture, focus settings, even things like the focus point size, the AF area setting, lock it into one of your back buttons and you can be focusing on something in the sunlight and when it comes into shade, just switch over to the other back button and the whole set of conditions that the camera set for change and they're, com they're ready for the, the subject now in the shade. It's something the photographers have wished for for a long time to be able to just suddenly, on the fly, change the camera settings to totally new ones. And register recall shooting function, which you can do with your custom controls and either of the back buttons on the camera, is a means to let you do this. The bottom line is that the 7D Mark II gives you some tremendous, tremendous control over your exposure and things related to exposure. And particularly for photographers who either are concerned about really being in charge of how exposure is done and or they want to work quickly. There are some neat tools in this camera to take advantage of to let you get to where you want to be.